Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Well, we're here today with something that I'm going to be sharing for the next four videos, which is hair ties decorations. Like we are going to take a simple hair tie and we're going to transform it in a really cute, beautiful, incredible pattern just because there's so many variations that we can create. I'm going to show you only on the uh, this neon orange yarn. I'm going to show you the uh, basic and just on one color and stuff like that. But you can go along and you can change the um, hook size and you can change the colors and you can change the styles as you want to to create what you're looking for. As you can see here, I have three of the styles that I've done, but I actually decided to do a fourth one, which I'm going to be sharing in um, as I said, separate videos. So we have one like a flower, then we have another one like a spiky, and then we have this one. This one is a combination of stitches, so that's why it's not that simple. And we're gonna make another one that is gonna be a lot more simple, that is just gonna be based on single crochets. But here I have the example of this one. You can see how pretty it is when you do two colors, the contrast that is great as long as you have yarns that match properly. As I said, for this video, I'm just going to be using this one. And by the way, this yarn called for a five millimeter. So you always have to go slightly lower on your hook just because you want these patterns to look quite tight. You don't want them to be loosed up because they are not going to look good. And we have to cover the entire head size. So we need to make sure we are covering. Like you can see, you cannot say that there is a head tie inside of it, but it is, okay? Look at this flower as well. You can always come and do different colors for the petals, and that's gonna be gorgeous. This one is super easy to do as well. And the black one, I didn't finish because I didn't have yarn enough, but it's as well a really pretty one that I'm gonna give you the full step-by-step. -step. So you can see they are really easy to do in no time, and you can easily make a bulk of them, take a couple of yarns and create different designs by one of these packages that have like plenty of hair ties. And let's get along with the step-by-step -step of how to do these beautiful hair ties for either grown-up or kids. It doesn't really matter because it's um, normal, regular uh, size of hair ties. So that's something you also have to keep in mind, by the way. Let's get along with the step-by-step. -step. We're gonna start with a really simple one. And this one is just the basic stitches. So you're gonna start doing a slip knot. And this slip knot will be attached to the hair tie. I decided to use a four millimeter at the end because as I say at the beginning, this yarn called four or five. What you're gonna do is you're gonna attach that yarn to your hair tie. And the way to do it is gonna be based on single crochets. So how many do you have to do? Well, that will depend on how big and how thick your hair tie is. So you have to build as many single crochets as, your, um, as you need to cover the entire hair tie. So go along, um, keep working on them. And this one is our base for every single project that I already shared or I'm about to share in the next few days. So this is the basic way how you're going to start every single of these actually four projects. As I was working along, I decided to do an extra one for you. And they are really simple. They are really easy. And this is why I say you can use two colors. In this case, I could have started with a neon orange and I could have changed for uh, another type of color to make it more like coming out and be more unique and more colorful. That's something you can play with if you have a lot of yarns around. You don't really need much yarn for this project. Obviously, the one that I used for the testing at the beginning of the video, it's quite short. Like I was just testing to see how does it look like if I wanted to do it the full round, if I want to do it only half, you know, like it will be visible only on the top when the person put it on but then on the bottom will be plain. That's also an option you can do. You can always stop and do kind of like, let's call it like half of a moon uh, pattern as well. But the base, which is this one, has to be done all covering your hair tie because I don't think you want to see the hair tie, um, especially if you don't have a hair tie that really completely matches 
the um, color of the yarn. That's why the black one is really good because even if I missed some stitches and I was meant to do more or whatever, um, it would have fade away just because the head ties are like dark brown and the yarn is black. But in this case, it's really visible the contrast between one color and another. So obviously we need to keep that in mind at the time of working. If you were to use another um, color, um, you can change by now. By the way, bring the tail back with you so you secure that beginning. I know some tails are quite wobbly and then they feel like there's threads everywhere, but the more you secure it, the faster and easier will be for you to work on these projects. Once you have reached the full length of the stitches that you need, as you can see, I'm even squeezing some of them in to make sure it's all covered. Uh, we are going to do a slip stitch. So as I was saying, if you were to do different colors, once you do this slip stitch, that will be the end of your first color and you will have to attach the other one. If you don't know how to attach colors, I have shown in multiple videos uh, previously to this one, so you can go and check that. So when we've created the base, we are gonna chain one. And on the first stitch, you're gonna do one single crochet. Yes, it's really similar to the one in the previous video, but then the second one will be a double crochet. And then you're gonna come to the next stitch and you're gonna do one single crochet. So yes, you are correct. We're doing a repetition of stitches the previous video was only a full pattern followed of single stitches. Here we are doing one single and one double. Why? Because we want to create a little bit of a texture on the project. We don't want it to be extremely circly and perfect as it was the previous one. Again, these are little modifications that you can do. And yes, it's noticeable that you have done that. And especially because of the way how we are going to end up the project so you just have to go across the entire circle and make sure you do one of each all the time it might not seem like once it's finished it's more visible but you are creating kind of like a hive with the double um crochet and then with the single crochet it's like you go down so you have this kind of like waves that once you start using the heta and it start twisting a little bit more, because right now it's really flat and perfect and not used, it start having a curve and it become like a wavy curve. It's so pretty and so cute. And I'm really glad I decided to do this small modification rather than just leave it as simple as it was the previous one. But I tell you the same like in the previous video. One, if you're more of a person that prefer patterns, well, you are on luck. You can find it in the description box down below my Etsy store. Over there, it's gonna take you to my Etsy store and you can uh, find a picture related to this video and purchase the pattern, the written pattern. Or if you accidentally found this video and you're like, no, I want the physical products. Again, you are on luck because as well, I have the physical products available. And the best thing of all is that I give you the freedom to choose the colors that you want to use. I give you the freedom to choose the modifications that you want to do. And all of that, we will discuss it further once you uh, place your order. And as well. We can do multiple colors, like I showed you at the beginning of the video. Or something even better. You can build this up and rather than just stop in this, that is the row two, well, you could go and do another row more. And then again, repeat the same amount of stitches one more time, where you next time will start with where you did a single crochet, you will do a double crochet and the other way around so you create even a bigger texture. Once um, you do that, you will see that the pattern start coming out a little bit, which I found it really pretty. I'm going to share really soon a video where I'm doing this type of stitch and showing you how is it look when you alternate the stitches and then you come on the next row and then you alternate them once more. Okay. But these patterns are so simple. I make them to give you really quick and easy ideas of projects that you can do, especially now with the summer coming, you're going to do like um, gifts or you're going to do like crafting markets and things like that. These are the best ones. You can take a bunch of them, multicolors, and then create a bundle um, and then make like a rainbow one. 
or make one with the four projects that I'm giving to you. Or maybe you are even courageous enough to go and do modifications and create your own. And please share them with us because I love you when you do that. So now as we finish, you're going to do a slip stitch and you're not going to chain anymore. No, no, no. You're going to go around the entire circle and you're going to slip stitch. Why? I mean, because I don't like to end the project only on chains and uh, normal stitches. I like to do a slip stitch because the slip stitch will give you a edge to every project that you do and an extra texture and shape to the edge of your project that I just found really cute and professional, let's say. Like whoever understands about crochet will say that project is finished. That project has been done until the end. I feel when we leave the projects just on normal stitches, doesn't matter the stitches that you've done, it's visible that it's like you haven't finished, but you did. I hope it makes sense what I'm saying, but that's how I feel. That's why I like to always do, either I'm doing a cardigan, a bag, like these hair ties, um, hats, um, scarves, gloves, whatever I'm doing. I like to finish my project with the slip stitches just because of that extra movement at the end of the project. I don't know. It's just my taste. It might not be yours. If you like it, how does it look once you reach the end of the previous row? And then you're like, okay, I'm absolutely done. By all means, be done. Um, that is okay too. There's nothing wrong with it. But um, I'm going to show you right now and you're going to understand what I mean. And I feel with this one that we have alternate stitches is just create like even a more noticeable texture to the project. And you might want to mark your beginning so you don't continue doing slip stitches, even if at some point uh, you're going to know that you are done, like I am done here. And you're going to find quite tight to um, do the last slip stitch just because you are doing a slip stitch inside a slip stitch. So it's quite tight. It's not meant to let you go in and work anymore, but you have to do so. And once you're done, uh, do one uh, chain and then fasten off and then you will be absolutely done. You can see how easy and how quick you can have a really cute design. And the only thing left to be done because we hide the tail from the beginning. Now we just have to hide the tail from the end. So go through your stitches before with your tapestry needle, find a way to hide it in between stitches that it will not be visible. Where is that tail going? That's why you shouldn't be leaving a really long tail. One, because you're wasting yarn and two, because your project is already secure enough. You don't have to go through the entire circle and sew it up to keep it more safe. Actually, I will say that's even less safe because if that start coming off, it's just going to be hard because if the person that you give it decide to cut it and cut it in the wrong way, that's when everything is going to come off. Okay. Just giving that suggestion out there. So don't really leave long tails and always remember to pull a little bit back. So the end of the last stitch that we've done, go back to place rather than dig in and be really clear where is the end of what you have done. But again, as you can see, there goes another video with a really easy pattern. And if you're an absolute beginner, these type of patterns are the best for you because you can go and practice all the stitches in a small pattern. You don't have to do the boring, um, squares that I teach you at the beginning, we can already move to some projects. And this one is one of them. One, because it's easy. You're following a circle. Two, you don't have to worry about counting of chains and things like that. And three, they're so easy and quick to be done and so visible all the stitches that there's no way you can mess this one up. Look at that. And now I'm showing to you the difference between doing all singles and doing one single and one double. The size is the same, I could say, but can you see the curvy bits where it's clear that we have created some extra edge to it? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check the next one and I'll see you soon.